We'll call this meeting to order the regular minute uh, meeting of the Strategic Planning and Priorities Committee held at the Council Chambers on, uh, and we'll just make sure that everything's on silent. And of the Strategic Plan, uh, pardon me, wrong one. <laughs> the regular meeting of, of the Council, that's right, of Council here held at the Council Chambers at 5 p.m. Tuesday, uh, 23rd of April. We'll start off with approval of the minutes of the regular council meeting and strategic planning. If you would please, or uh, that was held April 8th. Could we have that motion, please? I'll move that, Your Worship. I'll second that, Your Worship. <laughs> All in favor? Carried unanimously. Additions to the agenda? Uh, just one from administration, Your Worship. So we have a proclamation for Economic Development Week, which is May 6th to 10th. And I'll be under number four. Anything else? May I have a motion, please? I'll, I'll move that addition, Your Worship. Second? I'll second that, Your Worship. All in favor? Carried unanimously. Tonight, we have as they are youth mayor, we have Ethan Nelson sitting in where Mr. Wheeler usually sits. Mr. Wheeler is away on personal matters here uh, this evening. So we still have a quorum and we will be moving forward. There are no public hearings and notices, no delegations. We are, we're gonna start off with Mr. Van Betchew talking about uh, the police commission standing committee. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the police commission board met at the administrative board room Tuesday, April 16th. Uh, first item on the agenda was in correspondence from the government of Canada. Chief Pritchard provided some information released from Public Safety Canada in regard to an action plan on post-traumatic stress injuries. The board took this as information. In the mayor's report, in March 2019, in comparison to March 2018, the crimes against persons has increased by two, crimes against property has decreased by two, total calls for service has decreased by 14, from 458 in 2018 to 444 in 2019, and alarm calls increased by one. Chief Pritchard advised traffic tickets are down partly due to the weather and re-signing duties to homicide investigation. The board took all the, this report as information. Chief Pritchard presided the March by law enforcement activity report. Moved by Council, Councilor Van Betchew and seconded by Barkley Charlton that police chief and city manager work together to eliminate trucks from the WRCC construction site from driving down Douglas Roads between 5th Street and 16th Street from 5 to 9 p.m. on weekdays and all days on, and all day on weekends due to ball soccer and nursing home traffic in the area. Chief Pritchard preside, presented the Weyburn Humane Society report for the month of 2019. Impaired, impaired driving initiative, this rides on us final report. Chief Pritchard provided a final report on this rides on us initiative. Chief Pritchard advised that since the implement, implementation of August 2015 to 2017 with 15 to 20 individuals taking advantage of the program. This program was funded by SGI in the amount of $12,000 and after expenditures of taxi coupon, coupons, positive ticking items and advertising, the total cost was $10,585. A reduction of drunk driving showing up in the stats for these past three years. Councillor Van Betchew inquired if there will be more grant funding Moving forward, and Chief Pritchard advised they have, not, they have discontinued the program due to, they have discontinued due to the program uptake has dropped off over the time, so we'll abandon for now. Uh, these reports were all passed and accepted as presented. In unfinished business, 2019 police survey at the October 16, 2018 police commission meeting the chief received board approval from a University of Regina survey request wherein they would create an administer a community reception of the police service and its program estimated at a cost of $5,000. Chief Pritchard asked for an input from the board which was provided and now the draft survey is ready for review. 
Chief Pritchard asked the board review and identify anything further they wish to include in the survey. Chief Pritchard then advised he was now being advised by the act for the actual cost of the survey, which will be six thousand dollars. Chief Pritchard asked that it, if any board members have any additions or changes to the survey, provided to get comments back to him as soon as possible. On the strategic plan going forward, Councillor Richards and Chief Pritchard will meet and discuss after the meeting this day. New business, CAPG nomination. CAPG is accepting nominations for board of directors for the term of 2019 to 2021. Mayor Roy, has, more, Mayor Roy has sat on the board for the last two years and his term has expired. Mayor Roy advised he would like to sit on the board for another term if the board agrees. If the board wishes to nominate the mayor, a motion to nominate the mayor must be passed and the nomination submitted to CAPG prior to June 28, 2019. The election will take place at the CAPG conference in Calgary on Friday, August 9, 2019. Moved by Councillor Van Betchew and seconded by Rob Stephenson that the Wayburn, Police of, the Wayburn Board of Police Commissions nominate Mayor Marcel Roy for reappointment of a position on the Canadian Association of Police Governance Board of Directors for a two-year term for August 2019 to August 2021. This was carried unanimously. The meeting was adjourned. Questions, comments? I want to make a couple of comments there. The uh, first off, congratulate the Wayburn Police Service on uh, and combined units <clears throat> on the recent uh, drug uh, action that they did here in the, over the weekend, and uh, which would ended up having three people charged and numerous drugs uh, seized. So that was work well done. The survey will be coming out, and Mr. Van Betu, when was that to be started? Within about a month, the survey. If so, if people start Toward, towards the end of May, towards the end of May. So if people start getting receiving calls and asking about different things, uh, there is a legitimate police survey asking about how our police department is doing, and uh, our Waverly Police Services is hosting the uh, Western Canada Chiefs of Police Conference here next week. So that is very uh, good that we are able to host, and the chiefs are all getting together here for that meeting. Throughout, it will be chiefs from uh, our province as well as our Saskatchewan provinces here uh, coming to that. So that's what's happening in the police world. So this report will be filed, uh, be, uh, no noted that it has been received and filed. Moving on to the consent agenda, counts receivable report uh, and collections report, tax collections report, uh, I guess, with those three. And then we have our fire Report, activity report, it is also in the utilities report. All these can be found to be read on our website. Can I have a motion to, uh, of receiving these, please? Your Worship, I'll move that the following items on the consent agenda be accepted as presented. A, accounts receivable, a receivable report, March 2019. Uh, taxation collection report, December 31st, 2019. Taxation Collection Report, March 2019. Fire Activity Report, March 2019. Utilities Report, March of 2019. Second. I'll second that, Your Worship. Seeing no comments, or, uh, can we have the uh, call to question? All in favor? Carried unanimously. Motions, counts payable. May I have that motion, please? Your Worship, I'd be, make a motion that purchases in the amount of $892,187.27 from April 5th to the 18th be passed for payment. Second. I'll second that, Your Worship. Any discussion? Seeing none, call the question. All in favor? Carried unanimously. Beavers uh, baseball liquor permit. Mr. Warren? Yes, Your Worships, so we have a request from the Weyburn uh, Beavers Baseball Club uh, to once again sell liquor at their games at Tom Lane Park this year. Um, so their season will be starting here in May and it goes until August. Um, they'll follow all the standard processes for liquor and gaming. Um, they'll have a set space and security uh, in line for baseball games and to sell the alcohol during those games. 
Your Worship, I'm prepared to make a motion that the request from the Wayburn Senior Beavers Baseball Club to make an application to SAS Liquor and Gaming Authority to sell alcohol during this home game for 2019, 2019 baseball season at Tom Lang Park be approved. Second. I'll second that, Your Worship. Discussion? Seeing no discussion, call the question. All in favor? <coughs> Carried unanimously. The official community plan uh, RFP. Mr. Warren. Uh, yes, Your Worship. So on March 18th of this year, uh, the City of Weyburn uh, put a request for official community plan and zoning bylaw review, uh, and we posted that on, on our city website and on um, the required spaces for posting those requests. So we're looking for proposals from qualified consultants, cons consulting firms to conduct a review and update the official community plan, the zoning bylaw, uh, which was created in 2003, the intent was to achieve uh, two bylaws that will enhance, enhance existing land use policies and supporting development related regulations and align with council's strategic goals for continued and sustainable community growth. Um, so we had a closing date of April 15th, uh, 2019 at uh, 2 p.m. We had th uh, four proposals received uh, and the results are as follows. Uh, so we had P3 Architect Partnership or Regina at $43,724.25. Uh, Scott of Murray, uh, Miller & Murray and Altus Group out of Regina at $84,000. Um, V3 Companies of Canada Limited out of Saskatoon at $100,772.70. And WSP uh, Canada Group Limited out of Winnipeg at $53,880.75. Uh, so what we had in the budget uh, under um, our planning uh, was $70,000 for this. Um, recommendation uh, coming from administration is that we look at awarding to P3 Architects um, partnership of Regina for the $43,724.25. And so all the prices include labor, travel, disbursements, costs, and GST. With that, Your Worship, I'm prepared to make a motion that the bid from PS Architectural Partnership to conduct a review and update of the official community planning and the City of Weyburn zoning bylaw created in 2003 in the amount of $43,724.25 be accepted. Second. I'll second that, Your Worship. Discussion? Go ahead, Mr. Richards. Or Mr. Mr. Mickle first. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Matthew, it, it seems that the previous one we did in 2003, I know you weren't here then, but at that step, uh, desk anyway, but is, is that a long time to wait between uh, projects or to do this, or am I missing something? Uh, yes, uh, Councillor Mickle, it's a very long time to wait. Um, we should be doing that every you know, five to 10 years or review of that. That's a pretty long wait for us. Um, that's why we're asking for a review of both our official community plan and our zoning bylaws, because that is a substantial time for us to wait to have that done. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks, Your Worship. The City Manager, we had a, a brief conversation about this, and I'm hoping you can elaborate more. What I see again is a, is a big difference in the pricing. We've got the lowest bid, less than half of the highest bid. And I want to be sure, for my own peace of mind, that, that all of these companies have a, have a good understanding of what our expectation is, because that is an immense difference in pricing. So if you could just um, help explain why, why you think there's such a difference in pricing. Yeah, um, so Councillor Richard, so what we did is we looked for uh, four different areas for this request. Um, one was to, to do the review, uh, to look at the general review, um, to provide an update back to Council, um, to have consultations with the public. Um, they want to have some working groups look at this. All four groups actually met all those same criteria. I went through all four of the bids, they all had that. Um, some of the pricing came differently on um, hours of work to be put into the service. Um, some of it looked at disbursements for travel. Um, so especially when you look at a place out of Saskatoon or a place out of Winnipeg, disbursements are a little more expensive for that. Um, but overall, um, all four met the requirement for, for the request, but maybe didn't um, all get to the same point for the scope of the project. But all them met the scope as the review went through. Mr. Bailey? Yeah, and just another question for you, uh, Matthew. Um, what's the time frame to have this 
completed yeah. or do we have a time frame? No, we do have a time frame. So going back to Councillor Richard's question, in, in the request there actually was a time frame. Uh, time frame is quite um, um, tight, um, but it can look at expansion if, if we have to. Uh, so we're looking at starting this in May. Uh, so okay. after award, um, all proponents all put May start. Uh, and completion by December 31st of, of 2019. So December 31st? Of this year. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. And then I guess to follow up, so they, they bring proposals to us, we get to review them to see if we're happy with what they do or are saying on some of these issues or how does it work? For the official community plan and the zoning review? So yeah. what they'll do is they'll actually do a, a couple different looks, right? One, uh, for the official community plan, they'll actually look at future growth for the city look at current zones, how we have it currently zoned, and, and maybe some suggestions how we should change that. Okay. I'll look at growth patterns. Um, so right now we see our growth all exterior part of the, the city, and that's kind of where our growth's been over the last five, 10 years. They'll do a review of that. And that goes back to talking with our groups. So we'll actually bring in economic development and talk to them. Okay. Um, they'll actually have a session with the U.S. Council. They'll have a session with us as administration. They'll actually also have an open house. I think the open house is planned for September, October. Then what happens is they bring back requests back to us. So okay. for first, second, third readings. Uh, so they'll come back um, for the one for the official community plan and say this is what we think your plan should be for future growth. Our future planning for where industrial should be, where commercial should be, where residential should be. And on zoning, they'll review all of our current zones, our, our zoning okay. um, that we have, our zone, zoning bylaws. And so we may have uh, some substantial changes on our zoning bylaws. They may come back with some suggestions that will actually present to you as council for you to vote on and to accept or to ask questions back. So there may be multiple means. That's why it goes into December 31st. It may get pushed back if there's lots of changes within the zoning bylaw. It sounds like a lot of work, yep. but I'm glad the consultation between everybody through the process so it isn't all handed to us at one time. So yep. good. So, so the request you. that we had, um, Councillor Bailey, was that we wanted them to not just talk to us. We want to talk to the public. We want to talk to other players within the pro within the Community. Good, thank you. Mr. Mickel. Thank you, Worship. Uh, the budget on this project was 70000 yeah. Matthew. Came at forty three. Natter just keeps core in there. That sidewalk <laughs> looks better and better every day. Thank you. Yeah, just uh, so council's aware, this is something the council's had in their budget for multiple years. This isn't just a, a one-time thing we've had in our budget for multiple years. Um, we've carried it over for a couple of years. Uh, it's something that, uh, in my opinion, has to be done. Uh, it has to be done now, and like I said, if it, it takes more time than what we've requested, I'm more than willing to take that time to make sure this is done correctly. Two questions. There isn't going to be a cost plus on this one, is it? This is going to be the contract? It's not going to be like our, our, you know, some of our, in, how they, they don't operate like an engineering firm where this cost, it, it gets, gets plusing, plusing. No, plusing. So, so all the consultants were asked to put any add-on things they wanted to put on there, and right. I, I have not accepted anything as add-ons onto this project. Um, so, um, so this is the final cost. This is what the final cost is. Right. Uh, you may some, see some changes on some disbursement costs, some travel costs. If we ask them to come down more than what we asked within the uh, the RFP, that'll be minimal cost. It won't be a high cost, um, but there may be a request from us as administration to have them come down more often than what they are. And, and what I'm getting at is that if we accept this at 43, we're not going to get bumped up to the hundred thousand no. on there. Okay. And then uh, I guess the last part is to the youth council here. Uh, Ethan, that you'll most likely sit with the council as you talk, just so that you have the, that's your point where the youth council will be able to voice any things to also within their in the community plan. Very good. Any other discussion? Seeing no more, call the question. All in favor? Carried unanimously. Summer council meeting schedule, Mr. Warren. Me again. So yes. a request uh, from administration to uh, change our council meetings. Uh, so we usually have uh, two in July and two in August. Uh, we're looking at having just one in July and one in August. So we're requesting to have um, a council meeting on July 22nd and then one in August and on August 19th. Do you have a motion, please? Sure can, Your Worship. Very pleased to make this motion that the regular council meeting for the month of July and August be rescheduled and the council meetings will be as follows. One council meeting to be held on July, Monday, July 22nd at 5, 5 p.m. One council meeting to be held on August, Monday, August the 19th of 5 p.m. And that's my motion. Second. I'll second that, Your Worship. Seeing no discussion, 
Call the question. All in favor? Carried unanimously. No introduction of bylaws, no unfinished business. New business, discretionary use uh, development permit. Uh, the City of Weyburn has received a discretionary use development permit application from Jethu Joseph, owner of 203 7th Street Northeast, proposing to convert his single family dwelling into a duplex dwelling unit, which is a permitted use. However, he would also like to develop a secondary suite, which is discretionary in a duplex dwelling unit. The proposed project will provide three off street parking stalls and meets all current zoning bylaw setback requirements as well as the requirements for secondary suites in section 6.3.4 of the zoning bylaw. Secondary suites are only permitted to be less than 80% of the floor area of the primary suites. Entrance to be located on the side of the home. It will be on the north side for this project. And separate entrance, and it can only have a one bedroom suite. Secondary suites were introduced into the zoning bylaw in 2012 and were only permitted in detached dwelling units. In 2014, the section was amended to add secondary suites as a discretionary use within duplex and semi-detached dwelling units. The R2 zone for the development of duplex and semi-detached dwelling units while recognizing the demand for the conversion of older, larger detached dwelling units into rental housing. It is designed to conserve the general character of the established neighborhoods and encourage the renewal of existing housing. As a discretionary use, we're required to send out a neighborhood notice to all residents within 75 meters of the proposed development and give them an opportunity for input or to voice concerns. Notices were sent out on March 22nd with no concerns or comments received. In considering the development and ensuring it meets the requirements of the zoning bylaw, staff recommends option two, that council approve the secondary suite within the duplex dwelling unit subject to the following conditions. Offsite development levies in the amount of $2,233.50 shall be collected upon issuance of the development permit. This levy is applicable as per 6B2 and being in the amount applied for one multifamily unit due to redevelopment. The development shall comply with all zoning bylaw regulations. Off street parking shall be provided in accordance with section 14 of the zoning bylaw. The property shall be maintained in a neat and tidy order as per the property maintenance and nuisance abatement bylaw. Site landscaping shall be compatible with neighborhood standards and the building permit shall be obtained prior to construction starting. <coughs> yeah, a motion please. Yes, Your Worship. I'd like to make a motion that the discretionary use application from Jitsu Joseph to convert a single family dwelling into a duplex dwelling unit with a secondary suite at 203 7th Street, Lot 1, Block 38, Plan S1405 be approved with the conditions provided. Second. I'll second that, Your Worship. Discussion? Mr. Van Bet, you first. Thank you, Your Worship. A uh, qu couple questions, Amanda. Yep. They're, they're going to have the number, the correct number of parking stalls. Yes. The unit will be there. Currently, there is one off street parking yeah. stall on the north side, and there will be two more with a double car attached garage. So looking down the road, so if everybody on that street decided to have a secondary unit in their basement and a duplex unit or whatever, are we going to start to run into problems if they... We would run into would, a problem would with... Would limit it? Yeah. Um, center lots would have a lot more trouble developing duplex units with secondary suites due to the fact they wouldn't have enough space to develop extra parking. Because this is a corner site, they have the flankage side, which is adequate to put the parking stalls there. So corner sites in the older neighborhoods are probably gonna be the only ones you'll see with this type of proposal. Okay. And then I wonder also if you could, as I asked you this afternoon, if you could explain the levy as they're gonna be actual three units from one unit right. there, why there's only one levy charge. Yeah, um, secondary suites were added into the National Building Code. Um, with some lighter restrictions for versus the duplex and the semi-detached, which are full separate units. Uh, when we were looking at the offsite development levy and we were basing it on multifamily, secondary suites aren't considered a full separate unit because there are restrictions on how big they can be, um, how many bedrooms they can have. So there's a lot more restrictions on secondary units. So that's where we go with the full duplex unit, not the secondary. Mr. Bailey. 
Thank you, Amanda. Just on question on the on the uh, development levy, um, I know you've done your numbers correctly. Is this the first time we've used this? No. This is the first time from this bylaw. We yeah. have we've used the multifamily from the old bylaw yeah. on a few other ones. But yes. on the first one, so we first one from this bylaw. Tonight we're setting a precedence here, right. going forward. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Michael. Thank you, Mr. Man, I think you touched on it briefly, but I want to question you again. This this particular uh, development permit is in a in a corner, right? Yes. For example, if it was in the center of the street, would you be? giving us the same response or would that be a little different? Um, not likely, Dick, just because uh, there wouldn't be enough room for adequate parking because each unit has to have their own off-street parking stall. When you have center of the lot, center of the street lots, they're kind of limited with their side yard setbacks that they don't have enough room to build parking stalls that meet the minimum requirements of the zoning bylaw. Thanks. But that being said, We'll wait until something happens. If somebody flies, and then we'll see where that takes us. Call the question. All in favor? Carried unanimously. Our next one, uh, Mr. Richards is going to excuse himself. Conflict of interest. We have a home occupation, bookkeeping, and web design on Warren Avenue. If you would please. An application has been received from Lisa Laustel to operate a bookkeeping and web design service out of her resident at 1864 Warren Avenue. Located in R1 zone in the Burnway Place subdivision, this business will operate Monday through Friday 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. with minimal traffic increase. This would be considered controversial as the occupation would involve clients coming to the home throughout the day. With minimal anticipated increase to traffic flow, parking is available in the driveway for her clients. Home-based occupations are permitted and generally deemed controversial, requiring public notification. Notices were sent out to all neighbors within a 75 meter radius of the proposed home occupation. Residents received the notice on April 15th and no comments or concerns have been received. With that, staff recommends that council approve the home occupation at 1864 Warren Avenue, subject to the following conditions. No person other than the resident of the dwelling unit shall be engaged in the home occupation as an employee or a volunteer. No advertisement carrying out the address of the dwelling unit in which the home occupation occurs may be placed in any media. The face of any home business sign on site must not exceed 0.092 square meters and must be placed within the inside half of the front yard setback. Home occupations are subject to periodic review to ensure compliance. The owner's driveway shall be used for off-street parking to clients, and a city waiver and business license shall be obtained prior to the home occupation operation. Thank you. And I'll make a motion to, that the home occupation, occupation application of Lisa Laustel to operate a bookkeeping and web design service at 1864 Warren Avenue, lot 19, block 16, plan 78R1308 be approved with the conditions provided. I'll second that, Your Worship. Discussion? Mr. Bailey? Do you have any discussion? Why, why the restriction for just or only her as an employee? Why can't she have one employee? Uh, the zoning bylaw does not allow home occupations to have employees. It's for small scale businesses when they aren't big enough to start in a commercial location. Um, if they grow to be big enough to have multiple employees, we encourage them to move downtown to a commercial location. But they could apply to us to, if they have one employee. No, that would be against the zoning bylaw. There's no would appeal. Would change the zoning bylaw? Uh, the council could decide to amend the zoning bylaw. Okay, just as long as we know. Okay. Call the question. All in favor? Oh, Mr. Van Betju? Yes, I just want to, in absence of Councillor Richard, I just want to echo his concern all the time as we have quite a number of home businesses going up, which is great. It's uh, And hopefully they will blossom into larger businesses and move downtown. But uh, up until that point, we'll make sure that all the conditions are yes inspected and kept up to uh, snuff so to speak i guess yes uh, by law enforcement officer will go out there and do general checks on home occupations to ensure that compliance with the zoning bylaw call the question all in favor carried unanimously we have one more and we'll just wait for mr richards to come back in We 
uh, the last one is the home occupation, a hobby craft business on Maple Drive. If you would, please, Amanda. We have received an application from Bryn Kopeck to operate a hobby crafting business at a, her residence at 639 Maple Drive, located in R1 zo zone in the Highfield subdivision. This business will operate during various hours of the day throughout the week. Clients are only directed to the dwelling in order to pick up items. This would be considered controversial as the occupation would include clients going to the dwelling unit to pick items up throughout the day. Home-based occupations are permitted in R1 and generally deemed controversial, requiring public notification. Notices were sent out on April 15th to all neighbours within 75 metre radius of this dwelling. No objections or comments were received. With that, staff recommends that Council approve the home occupation at 639 Maple Drive, subject to the following concerns. No person other than the resident of the dwelling unit shall be engaged in the home occupation as an employee or volunteer. No advertisement carrying out the address of the dwelling in which the home occupation occurs may be placed in any media. The face, of any, the face sign of any home business sign on site shall not exceed 0 0.092 meters squared and shall be placed within the front half of the front yard setback. Home occupations are subject to periodic review to ensure compliance. No customers shall be directed to the dwelling after 9 p.m. Monday through Sunday. Owner's driveway shall be used for off-street parking for clients and a city waiver and business license shall be obtained prior to home occupation operation. Your Worship, I'd like to move that the home occupation application for Bryn Kopeck to operate a hobby craft business at 639 Maple Drive, lot 33, block five, plan FZ4842 be approved with conditions provided. Second. I'll second that, Your Worship. Discussion? Seeing no discussion, call the question. All in favor? Carried unanimously. Inquiries and announcements. Uh, we'll start off with do we have a proclamation by the economic. Who is, is somebody here? For that? Uh, so we have a couple members from the board, Your Worship. So we have uh, Councillor Dick Mickle, who's on the board, and Larry Haig, who's also on the board, who's here. Um, so I'll just go through the proclamation. Okay. Um, so the proclamation is that the City of Weyburn um, supports uh, Economic Development Week. Uh, this week um, promotes awareness of local economic development programs that generates jobs, advances careers development opportunities, and creates vibrant communities. Um, so this week will happen between uh, May 6th to 11th. So before I said May 6th to 10th, it's May 6th to 11th. Uh, and it's the fourth annual uh, event for this week. Very good. And so is proclaimed here. The any other inquiries and announcements? Anything from the youth council? No comments. No. With there's that, uh, there's no notice of motions. So that so ends the meeting, and I call this meeting adjourned.